Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop, Part 3. Working on a 5 inch gauge steam locomotive, cleaning and polishing the buffers. So, why is there a picture of a Bridgeport milling machine in the opening sequence? Well, I thought you might like to see this. It's a lovely machine and it's currently fly cutting the end of a cylinder. This is one of a pair of cylinders that were made by John at the Steam Workshop and he cut them from a solid piece of metal using nothing but a hacksaw and a file. No, that's a lie. He used the CNC machine. And moving to the left of the milling machine is a Harrison M300 lathe. A very nice machine and you'll see me using it very shortly. I find it hard to believe the comments from some viewers. One particular viewer said I shouldn't be using emery cloth in the lathe. Well, figure that one out. This is a modern machine with sealed bearings and very hard bedways. I've been using emery cloth in my lathe and it's about 60 years old now. And it still seems to work the same way as it did when I bought it. To the right of the Bridgeport milling machine is a hard inch lathe, and this is an old lathe as you can see by the paint finish. Old, but very, very good. And these three wonderful machines are in John Holroyd's part of the workshop. And whereabouts am I working? Well, I'm working here. I need to remove the paint from this chassis because it's a bit of a mess, and before doing that I'm applying some degreaser. And then I'm going to leave it for a while and let the degreaser eat its way into the grease before blasting it off with the steam cleaner. These are the buffers and I've just finished using the bead blasting cabinet to initially clean them up. I'm not going to get a good finish on them though by using emery cloth by hand. So it's over to the lathe again. I have a technique that I've evolved over many years for sanding in the lathe and this prevents any of my fingers from being removed. Can you see what it is? More about that in a moment. What I'm doing in this clip is using the emery cloth folded in half to clean up the buffer shank and behind the buffer head. And here's my emery technique in action. First of all, I never use the emery as a single sheet. Instead, I fold the piece of emery cloth into about four thicknesses. Health and safety warning, it can be very dangerous using emery cloth or getting your hands near to a revolving chuck. On the video, my hands look very close to the chuck, but in reality, they're not. My left hand is about three inches away from the chuck. I always apply positive pressure on my right hand with my left hand. This helps me control the position of the emery cloth and stops it from slipping into the chuck. So really the control is by my left hand, not by my right. This unorthodox technique has worked very well for me over the years and to prove that I've still got six of my fingers left. Here's a close-up image of the buffer that I've just been cleaning. I'm using quite fine emery cloth. And as you can see, it's still very pitted. This engine spent a lot of time in a damp environment, so all the parts are like this. The next stage of the operation is using the polishing spindle. And you will see that I'm wearing gloves and hating every minute of it. But there isn't a pot of water right next to the wheel. In my workshop, I have a pot of water. So when the parts get hot, I just dunk them in the water. But there's no such thing here. And also, it's a health and safety thing. I'm wearing gloves because it's the protocol in the workshop. I much prefer to burn my fingers, really, because I'm a bit strange that way. No, that's not the reason. I've mentioned the reason many times in these videos. I need to know where my fingers are relative to the rotating components all the time. And as you can see by these gloves, my thumb doesn't come right to the end of the glove. So the glove itself, I suppose, could get caught in the machinery and drag my finger after it into the machinery. So that's why I don't wear gloves. Without the gloves, I can accurately see where my fingers are relative to the rotating parts of the machines. And even with these gloves, I can still feel the heat, but it's nowhere near as painful as it is when I hold the part in my bare hands. When you're using a polishing spindle, it's quite important to make sure that the abrasive is applied regularly, otherwise the part really does get hot. The abrasive is in the special block that I keep touching on the wheel. This polishing spindle is double-ended, on one end is a large soft wheel, the one I'm using at the moment, and on the other end is a harder, smaller wheel. And when I apply the abrasive to the smaller wheel, it really does remove some metal. The part is now getting very hot, I can feel it through the gloves, so it's time for a bit more abrasive on the wheel. A health and safety warning as usual, when using a machine like this, eye protection is essential. Personal protective equipment must be worn. You can see the guard on the machine, and again, this is an essential thing, because if the wheel grabs the buffer, then it will suddenly come your way at a great speed. 
I really don't want these buffers to be highly polished. I need an emery cloth finish. And now, using the left and right hand technique as usual, I'm working down the grades of emery cloth, from the coarse stuff to the finer grade. And after a while, it looks like this, which is where I want it to be. Not too polished, not too perfect. Just right, in fact. All I have to do now is repeat this process another three times. Don't worry, I'm not going to show the process in its entirety. I always edit, because it's quite a long job, and once again, you need a lot of patience. Here I am on the second buffer, starting off with 100 grit, and then using some 138 grit, which gives me the finish that I need. But for the moment, I'm removing metal. It's important to keep turning the emery cloth to a clean piece of emery, so that the emery cloth continues to cut the metal. I'm not using any lubrication on this. Normally when you clean metal with coarse emery cloth, you use lubrication, but I don't want it spinning everywhere and all over me. So I'm doing it this way, dry. It'll be okay at the end. I'm showing this clip because it's important and it illustrates a point. You can see my hands jumping up and down. That's because the work is starting to grab the emery cloth, particularly near the center, as the piece of emery cloth becomes unstable. And that's where the left hand comes in. My left hand is firmly guiding my right hand because my right hand is very busy applying the correct pressure to the work and make sure that the emery cloth keeps moving. So be very careful when you do this, but try it yourself. Use the left hand against the right hand technique. It's a bit like arm wrestling yourself. The left hand is always applying pressure against the right and the right applies pressure back against the left. It works for me anyway, and they end up looking like this. Not perfect, but much better than the word to start with. So now I'm going to put these in one of the plastic boxes, but before I do that, I'm going to spray them with WD-40, because after all this effort, I don't want them to go rusty again in the box. The buffers on full-size steam locomotives and the rolling stock are generally covered in grease anyway, and it's very much the same on modern locomotives. Next time you're at the station, have a look. Well, that's quite enough of this frivolity. It's time to get back to reality, and I'm using the steam cleaner to blast off the degreaser that I applied at the beginning of the video. And it seems to be working. It's feeling a lot less greasy. This engine spent quite a lot of its life just sat in a shed somewhere, and it was very greasy, very dirty, very oily, and the damp storage definitely took its toll on the engine. My job is to resurrect it and bring it back to its former glory. And there's no shortcut on this, I'm afraid. Any loose or flaky paint is coming off with the steam cleaner and the degreaser combination. But I really can't just paint over this mess because it's rusty underneath the paint. So what I'm going to have to do is remove the paint. And for that, I need some paint stripper. And the paint stripper that we use at Steam Workshop is quite safe. Well, it wouldn't be if you drunk it. It would be fairly lethal, I would think. But it's a good bit safer to use than some other commercial paint stripper. Paint stripper, though, doesn't work through grease generally, or this stuff doesn't anyway. So I'm going to give the paint stripper a helping hand by using a wire brush, as you've just seen me do here. On this 5-inch gauge model, which is called a chub, there's a big gap in the running boards where the cylinders are. This is a good idea, really, because it allows you to remove the cylinder cover without taking the running boards off. But unfortunately, as the top of the cylinder has been exposed for many years and gone rusty, all the rust has to be removed before it gets painted. In this clip, I'm applying the first coat of paint stripper. I had to do this twice, because this paint stripper is a bit weaker than the other stuff, but safer. I really like the coconut and vanilla yogurts that you get from Lidl supermarkets. They really are good. And that's what this paint stripper looks like, although I don't think it would taste the same. I might try it one day, if I ever lose the will to live. And now, after another steam cleaning session just for a change, the paint is now coming away from the chassis. You can clearly see the extent of the rust. And that's it for now from Steam Workshop. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.